Tealus for Operation Dread Factor, the new season coming up. And with all the patch notes and everything that going on, who is the best po people, who are the best ops to run for the new season uh, to get a, a good rank? Let's go through it. We're going to go through all the changes in the game and more. So first, we're going to start off with the new operator. It's not going to be on the list, but I'm going to just place an op there for, for now and uh, show you guys where he would be. The new op, Fenrir. He is uh, two speed. He's really very mobile. He has five uh, of, of his little traps and that shoot out gas. You can activate three at a time. If an attacker destroys one with a twitch drone or shoots it when it's active, you will not get that active code back. So you could potentially have two dead abilities that cannot be activated. So in terms of thinking about his ability, he has three active ones at any time that can just get shot very easily. But they put them in blind spots and put them in the ceiling. It will slow down attackers because if you run into that and you get swung, it's going to really mess you up. So, very, in a Call of Duty meta, he's going to be a little bit stronger to just, you know, deny everybody. So, where I'd place Fenrir, I would place Fenrir currently, especially at the start of the season, at an A tier. I wouldn't place him at S tier because I feel like his ability is really easy to be dealt with. And... I think as people learn Fenrir's play style and how to counter a little bit more, he may slowly drift down to B tier. But right now, he's going to be A tier. So definitely a good op to run at the start of the game. Uh, start of the new season, I should say. All right, now we're going to go to the operators that have been changed this season. So Thunderbird, she's losing impacts in Nitro, and she's going to have barbed wire and bulletproof camera. But her cooldown on her Kona station is going down to 15 seconds from 35, and her healing is going... 20 health instead of 30 so her Kona station is getting a massive buff but her overall kill potential is going down so in my eyes i'd place thunderbird at c tier but with her Kona station getting slightly buffed i would honestly probably raise her up slightly she's more of a support healer than she is a fragger now but you still have a decent gun to frag so b tier i, I would place on pc i place c but on, on console, it'd be more beats here. This is more of a console operator. So. Not that you can't run it on PC, but I, I most PC players would prefer Doc over a Thunderbird because this is kind of still has a, quite a bit of recoil on PC. The Chanka, he's going in a prox alarm. Honestly, I don't really think that really changes how Tachanka's played whatsoever. Uh, Tachanka will go down to the seats here. The line of sight is... Line of sight with your launcher is for denial. I... Other operators, I feel like, can do it as well, if not better. Smoke is a massive one. Smoke is S tier, but now Smoke is losing his shield. So he is going to be not as strong. However, I do think that Smoke is still going to be an S tier operator. I feel like he is the best at area denial in post plan situations. You can set up the site, you have decent kill potential. You can deny an area, and I mean, yeah, you don't have a shield, but a lot of times when I'm playing smoke, there's not the necessary spot for my shield. There's some spots for shields, and hell, you, you just have to work with a teammate. Like, hey, someone bring a shield for the smoke, and the smoke can just bring barbed wire or a proximity alarm instead. So I feel like smoke is still going to be strong, just a little bit weaker. Not as strong as before, like by far the best operator of the game, a little bit weaker. Pulse. Uh, is losing his barbed wire, but is going to get a deployable shield and an observation blocker. I do believe that he still gets a nitro, though. So I don't really see how that affects his... I mean, he lost his barb, added a deployable shield and an observation blocker, but he still has a nitro, I believe. So, I mean, Pulse... I would say Pulse is more of a B tier. Like, very situational, but when it works, it, it definitely works. Jaeger Barb is gone. Yes, that's what we're getting at. Jaeger Barb Wire is gone, and he has Observation Blocker. So he has a Bulletproof Cam and an Observation Blocker. So he has really no potential to slow the enemy down. Yeah, you're only going to have a camera or an Observation Blocker. So you either give more intel to your team or deny their intel. But even so, I mean... 
ADSs are always strong. I wouldn't say Jaeger is an S tier because they are nerfing his secondary utility. His ability is really strong still, but I do think Wamai shines a little bit more in the current meta, specifically in the current meta. All right, we're going to go to Grim. Remember, we're doing all the operators that did change. Grim went from E tier. Why ever play him? Now, he, okay, so his hive is getting, uh, so you're going to be able to shoot it faster, deploy it quicker, It'll last longer. It'll activate faster. Uh, duration will go from 8 seconds to 16 seconds. The radius goes to 4.6 meters from 3.6. So the B radius is larger. And uh, the duration of, of the decay is going to go down to, from, to 4 seconds from 9. So if you touch it, it's going to go away a little bit faster. But uh, overall, I, I see this as a massive buff to Grim being able to use his hive launcher more effectively. It lasts a little bit longer, so you can hold off an angle for a little bit longer while you peek something else, let's say. And you're gonna need a Bailiff and a hard reach charge. So now he just doesn't function as a kind of useless operator. Now he's like a secondary hard breach entry combo thing. Like a very flexible flex op or support, let's say. And you are three speed with an amazing gun. So honestly, I, th I think he goes from E tier with this change all the way to call me crazy, but I see him being played a lot more. I'm going to say he's a B tier operator. I, I, I know that's a little weird, but he went from completely horrible to actually, I could see how this would be somewhat useful. I, I played him a little bit in the test server. Doesn't feel bad. Goyo is a big one, uh, losing his Nitro. He's getting impacts, grenades, though. So, honestly, I don't really feel like this changes Goyo too much because impact grenades are still really strong. He's also going to get a Bulletproof Cam. But uh, I'm going to place Goyo at A tier. I, I just see Goyo still being really strong in the area of denial. Uh, won't have a Nitro, but you still have an amazing gun, and you know you still have impacts. So, Goyo still really strong. Flash is getting a deployable shield. I don't understand that, but uh, you could run Clash with smoke and Clash could give smoke the shield. I, I don't know, but I'm sorry, but I'm still placing Clash at E because Clash is just a horrible operator unless you have some type of strat in a five stack that you, revolves around the Clash in some capacity. Other than that, I just see Clash being a detriment. You're not ever going to get a frag and uh, you're probably going to go down. Make it into 4v5, so... Alibi is a, another massive one. Alibi is going to have her shield taken away, her impact taken away, she's going to be an observation blocker and a prox alarm. Normally, I would place Alibi in this range. But with this change, no shield, no impacts. I just don't see the reason to bring an Alibi. Besides, you like her gun. Her ability is garbage. Her secondary utility is honestly pretty bad. Observation blocker and prox alarms. Because let's talk about observation blockers right now. Uh, after I place alibi, I'm gonna place alibi at C tier. I just don't see a reason to really bring alibi anymore. Besides having a bailiff, observation blockers are gonna be on the following operators: Ella, Rook, Warden, Cavera, Cade, Maestro, Pulse, Alibi, and Jaeger. Here's why I have a problem with the observation blockers. They place them on operators that already have fairly decent utility to slow down the enemy or it kill the enemy with like a nitro and an impact. Ella barbed wire, Rook impacts, Warden nitro, Cavera impacts, Cade nitro, Maestro impacts, Pulse nitro, Alibi, you can make a, you can make a, you know, maybe. Uh, and Jaeger, I mean, Jaeger has a bulletproof cam or observation blocker. So the only two operators that it might be a beneficial to do would be Jaeger and Alibi. Everyone else is like, I can make it a reason why not to. So, but you are going to get three of them versus two or one. So, you know, some takes or some holds might, you know, it might not be bad. Okay, now let's go to everybody else, shall we? Sledge, S tier, don't even need to think about it. One of the best entries in the game. It's three armor, yeah, sucks, but grenades, gun, good gun. Like, if you don't think Sledge is an S tier, you have no idea how to play Rainbow Six Siege. Thatcher, S tier, makes it just so much easier to open everything. Like, yeah, you have MP impacts, but you have to find the utility. It's just, 
Like it's just they're very annoying. Thatcher is an S tier on especially on especially on certain maps. He's a lot better, but almost almost all situations I can think where Thatcher is going to be very very viable. Yep, S tier. Same as Smoke, but has a Nitro. I mean, and you deny a lot of intel. Really strong. I mean, and deny walls. I mean, you can do everything. No one's ever going to cry if you go mute. Thermite, S tier. Actually, ah! Uh, is this a ranked tier list or a comp tier list? Let's do a ranked tier list. Yeah, mute is an S tier still because if I had to rate mute uh, when he was a two armor, he'd be higher than S tier. He's just way too strong. Now he's like... He he has, he's not as strong as before, but he's still extremely strong. Thermite, I'm going to place it A tier. Because Thermite's walls are more for the inside walls. Or, or sorry, when, when you're outside and you have to breach something where you're already going to be completely safe. And it's really easy to deal with Thermite. If you know what you're doing as like a, let's say a bandit. So he's more of an outside wall breacher. So like he doesn't have as much flexibility as the other hard breaches we're going to talk about, which are going to be Ace and... Ibana. Range hard breach. You can deal with a lot. You can destroy Miras. I mean, you're going to see a Thermite. Ever Thermite breach. A Mira? Hell no, you're not. I mean, Ibana and A's just have a lot more variability. Ibana's probably the best hard breacher overall because of how many pellets you get. So if you're getting tricked, you get a lot of chances. Ace is more of a fragger than he is a hard breacher, but it is a nice up to run especially in ranked when you you get a good gun and you're the hard breacher technically so it's always nice to play ace so i would list them over thermite purely for that reason ash one of the best entries of the game is going to be a tier i mean amazing gun speed and i mean you're going to get use out of your breaching rounds so hey castle i'm going to place it b tier a little bit more situational but extremely strong on the t rounds that he's used i mean these ops are going to be very strong on the rounds where they are going to be viable. C tier is going to be a little bit less viable than B tier. And then D is like, why are we picking this operator? And E is don't ever pick this operator. Montane. We're going to place a C tier. A little bit less viable. Can be really strong in certain situations. But overall kind of. Switch B tier. F2 is completely horrible. So we're talking about the DMR today. Um, DMR Twitch is always going to be fairly strong. Uh, and the drones are always nice. Brava is oh, about the same range in my eyes as Twitch. Her gadget is a little, is, in my eyes, is a little bit uh, more, f less flexible. Like you have to, Brava's more of a counterplay operator. Like if they're picking a some, something that you want, then you go Brava, which you can kind of do with whatever you need to. But Brava is more of a counterplay to the Twitch. No, sorry, the counterplay to like a Capkin, Maestro, Cams, Echo, utility that you want you know etc we want the cameras why pulse b situational not always going to be viable and uh very easy to spot a pulse coming doc i'm going to place in my eyes is going to be this is going to be controversial maybe i'm placing doc at eight here i think doc is the the better healer between doc and thunderbird as the mp5 with with, with Amazing gun. We'll have barbed wire, bailiff to set up the site, and the heels are going to be always functional. But the problem with Doc is a lot of people will run around as Doc and get killed early. So you do have to kind of be aware, like, okay, well, if you are alive, the heels are going to be really strong. You are zero to a hundred on anybody, and you can set up the site. So if everybody's running around with like little roam around ops, I'll just go Doc, bring barb, bring a bailiff, and set up the site, and I'll be good to go and just hold it down. Gonna be hard to take down, Doc. So, hey, Rook, I'm placing down in the E tier. I had to think about it for a second. I think that Rook is just a inferior version to Doc in every single capacity, um, and there's no reason to really have both of them. So, I'm not supposed to say if if you're not confident in yourself, a lot of people when people aren't confident, they go Montane or Rook for a reason. They're they're bringing you know when they're Rook. Yeah, you give them armor, but you're not really doing it much else. You have a good gun and impacts, but eh. Fuse, I'm going to place at the... Uh, I'm going to place Fuse at the D tier. I thought about placing him here, but I see a lot more use out of these ops than I would with Fuse. So, in that motion, I would place Rook even further down. So, 
Fuse, D tier. I mean, there's just not many opportunities to really use Fuse, and when you do, it's really hard to be super effective with Fuse unless your entire team is around you. I just don't see Fuse doing very much in any situation in any in any ELO. Maybe maybe low ELO, it might be okay. But a high ELO Fuse is not an operator that is when people pick Fuse, you're looking at them with an eyebrow up like, why are you going Fuse? No. Lies. I'm saying D tier because again, very situational operator can be strong in the right situations, but in almost all situations, he's going to be very like, why are we going glass? Like you're going to hear that a lot. If you go glass, like why are you going glass? So I'm going to place him at the D tier. Nades are nice though. Capkin, you cannot go wrong with the capkin. Those traps are extremely obnoxious, especially on console. They're extremely obnoxious in general. Having to shoot the door while the defender is swinging you is super goddamn annoying and super like not fun to play against. So for that reason, the powerhouse blitz again, situational situational shield, but can be really strong in the right hands. And it is extremely annoying to die to a blitz. IQ. IQ currently in my eyes is still going to be at the D tier. I just don't see much of a point in bringing IQ other than you want to run the commando and be a three speed, but now you have Grim. So you may make the, the argument, well, I, ha I can see traps and stuff. Well, are you telling your team that or are you just seeing traps for yourself? Like Grim is as fast as IQ and has a lot more utility than IQ now. But in certain situations, IQ can still be good, just like these other operators can still be good. If like, oh, you're the chicken, a K claw, whatever. Like, you can make an argument that IQ can get used, but IQ overall is going to be very mid. You want me to do gridlock? Okay. Gridlock, I am going to place gridlock at the D tier. I think that gridlock is a very subpar flank watch compared to the Nomad, who's literally right next to her most of the time. So, gridlocks are, uh, the guns are good. The shot, secondary shotgun's nice, and the traps are do get some use, but a lot of times they're just not super great. You can just deal with the gridlocks. It's nice for flank watch, but there's just so many better options in my eyes. Like Nomad. Nomad, I would place... I'd place Nomad at the A tier, honestly. Nomad is flank, the flank watch extraordinaire. Great. Um, flashbangs, two speed, and uh, remember Ayana? Remember that Ayana, you know, broken thing we have to deal with all season long? Well, uh, Nomad still has the broken version of the ARX, by the way. She's a vert grip now. Like, that, that gun is still extremely strong. It's not worse anymore. Like, it's, it's still extremely strong, and Nomad still has it, so... Speaking of Ayana, easy S here. Don't need to think about it at all. Grenades and good gun. Why is Grim in there? What do you mean? Lion? Lion? Oh, okay. Lion is... He's floating between here for me. I think that he is more used than anybody at the B tier. I'd say Lion is shifting more to the A tier for me. The scans are always useful. You will have EMP impacts to help open up like he functions more of a, a support in my eyes and his gun is really great so i i just i think lions at, at the a tier bandit is gonna be b tier uh yeah he's gonna be a b tier actually no he's he's more situational than anybody here so i would say bandit is more c tier but situationally when he used in the right situations is extremely strong but usually on a wall Good gun and nitro. Flash is horrible. We literally have stats to prove it. So, I mean, you tell me Clash is good. Tell me how Clash is good. Everyone loses with Clash. He was on console. Clash is just bad. Not much else to say there. All right, we got Buck. Buck 
close between S and A tier for me. I would say Buck is probably going to be an S tier because I know I'm going to get some grief if I don't put him S tier. I, in my eyes, I think of him as an A tier operator because his gun is a little oofy for me sometimes. But overall, I mean, you have the shotgun to make soft breach. You have a good gun. It's pretty good. Uh, hard breach charges. I mean, Buck is a overall a really good operator. So, Frost, easy A tier. Amazing gun. One five scope, shield, traps to stop the the crazy Call of Duty meta. Everything about Frost is really strong. You're never gonna have anybody complain about on your team that oh my god, why are you bringing Frost, bro? Blackbeard eats here. Why are you doing that? Just stop. Just... There are situations where Blackbeard could be kind of good, but most of the time it's gonna be completely ass. It seems like it's a lot stronger than it is, but uh. The shield is just, you're so slow. It's never really that great. Overall, Blackbeard is just a horrible operator. So, Observation blocker is very mid because they put them on operators that have already decent utility. Here, I'll show you guys so, again. Ella, Barb, Brook, Impacts, Warden, Nitro, Kavera, Impacts, K, Nitro, Maestro, Impacts, Pulse, Nitro, then Alibi and Jaeger had their utility changed, so you can make an argument for observation blockers for these two ops. But everybody else, I just don't see why you would. It could be good if you're like you have a lot of observation blockers, everybody's running around or whatever. But uh, you know, maybe. But I just I don't know. You, you it depends on. They can be good. They're not. Uh, it's not bad utility. But when you compare it to an impacts or nitro, I'm just like. Impacts and Nitro are always just so strong, right? I don't know. Valkyrie, don't need to think about that one. That's an easy one. Cameras, Nitro, good gun. I mean, I thought Pulse is losing C4. Is he, is he losing C4? Because I'm looking right here. Right? It said removed barbed wire and added shield and observation blocker. Now, I, I'm assuming they all, they're all getting three because some of these are like, like smoke losing shield added alarm. Added alarm. Like, just added alarm. Didn't take anything away. Just gave him an alarm. So he is losing Nitro. Yeah, is it able to compete with the Nitro Cell paired with Pulse ability? Doesn't look like he's losing his Nitro, guys. It looks like everyone's going to get three options of gadgets, I, I think. Or some of them will. I, I, I don't know. But he's not losing the nitro from what I just read. But lost the shield. Yep. Smoke's still an S tier operator though. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I stand by that. Good run pulse deployable shield go, guys. <laughs> Capital. Situational, but extremely strong in the right situations. And overall, it's basically a Swiss army knife of just dealing you have fires, you have smokes, you have hard breach charge, you got a gun. So he has so much going on. I he's not the master of anything, but he's a Swiss Army knife. Speaking of Swiss Army knives, you have Zero right next to him. Again, another Swiss Army knife could deal with a lot of different situations. His cameras, RP charge, gone six, good gun. Like, I struggle to place them higher than beats here because nothing they do is the best of anything. But they're really strong because they can do everything. But they're more, to me, they function more as like solo play kind of stuff. Well, Capital is more, you know. It, most people are going to be using them in solo play, but they do have a lot of team oriented abilities. So, like, it, it just doesn't like strike true for me, if that makes sense. Vera D tier can be pretty strong, but overall is fairly weak. Only close range. Usually only works in low elo. I elo Kivera is very mediocre. Yeah, Smoke is definitely a comp change. They, they took his shield away because he's, Smoke has been a powerhouse forever. But it, comp players can still run another operator just to bring Smoke to shield. Like, if, if, if you're changing for comp, like, Smoke can still, will still get his shield. Just in a different way. Like, hey, someone go... I don't, I don't know. Like, Warden shield. So you give smoke his shield or yeah there's always a way there's a way around it 
Echo! Echo plays in a B tier. Echo's shotgun is a goddamn monster. His MP5 is a monster. His cameras are always going to be strong, and he has impacts, and he's fat. He's two speed. Echo is a pretty strong operator. I like Echo a lot. His shotgun is goddamn new. I'm sure you guys have seen that shotgun. It's insane. Or Echo Shield. There you go. Echo Shield with a shotgun. Give it to the smoke and run around with your shotgun with your cameras. Maestro, a little bit weaker than Echo because the cameras can't move around and his gun, his gun is okay. The Alda, he didn't need his bailiff to set up the sight, but I just, I just see Maestro fall into this range or even lower. I can't in good conscience put them, put him with any of these operators. I have to put him at the D tier. Just slow meatball man. That's pretty strong, but doesn't really stand out too much. Nice. Jackal, A tier, don't need to think about that. That is a extremely good roam clear, good guns. Um they're gonna shotgun, smokes. Jackal can do it all. He's not I wouldn't put him in S tier because late round he is a little bit weaker. You stand to have like I have to go through a door or push around my team. But like for the roam clear, he's extremely S tier. But late round he's more like B tier. So A tier average. Same reason. Um, same reason. I, I struggle to put Doke at S tier because you do have to use a DMR. And you don't get, like, a normal, like, AR. So, probably better for the Rome clear, but both can are extremely strong for the Rome clear. Same, same things. I think Jackal is better at the late game than Doke is. Like, Doke is extremely S tier early rounds. But, uh, Doke falls to, like, this B or C tier late rounds. Mira S tier, don't need to think about that. If they have a Mira, you literally have to play around how to counter the Mira every single time. Yeah, the DMR is good, but it, I, there's a lot of times where you'd rather just have a, a normal assault rifle. I'm not saying it's bad. It's not a bad DMR. It's just sometimes you just want a better DMR, like Twitch's DMR, or you want a normal gun. Ying, I'm gonna place Ying at the A tier again. Can function. I mean, Ying has an extremely good LMG. Candelas that can basically secure you rounds on on the push. You have a hard breach charge. I mean, Ying can do a lot. So Ying to me definitely screams A tier and a hard breach charge. So a lot of times I'll bring Ying because I want a hard breach charge and I want to be able to push somebody. I want to push somebody and I want a hard breach charge. And a good gun, Ying. Legion, this might be controversial. Maybe, perhaps. But I think that Legion is the best roamer in the game. I just think that he has a good gun. He's impacts, he's two speed, and you can put traps on any door, window, etc. around the map, and that you're always going to know where they're coming from. It is really, 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 really hard to sneak up on a good Legion. That's why I'm putting him in S tier. This is not necessarily just a comp tier list, but this is for ranked. So, what you guys are going to be playing. So, I think Legion is S tier. If it's a roamer, it can't be an S tier op. Change my mind. Well, Legion can doesn't have to be a roamer. He can be an anchored even. You can play Legion however you want, and he's going to be good. His traps are always going to have use, always going to be functional. And no matter if you're playing hard realm, soft realm, anchor, it doesn't really matter. Leash is always going to be strong. So, Sophia, I want to play Sophia at S tier. But I, I just physically can't because of how she is. Like, I, I have to put her down to A tier. Hell, I kind of want to place her lower. But it's because Ash, it just feels stronger. But Zof is still really strong. A lot of utility on Zofia. So, when you pick Zof, you're picking more for the. The uh, utility that you are for the, your entry ability. So Zof is still can function as an entry, but I just feel like Zof just is falls a little bit short. Ella definitely got an, a buff lately, but does Ella rise to the rank of B tier? I'm gonna say Ella is still at C tier because I just feel like there are better traps, and uh, Fenrir we put at A tier. Remember. Ella is Ella's good, good gun, but you don't have much else going on than your gun. Utility is nice, not bad. You can throw wherever you want, but uh, 
No one's ever going to be like, hey, guys, we need an Ella this round. I just refuse to believe that anyone has ever said that. So. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not just doing a comp list because I'm, I'm doing more of a ranked list for the everyday Joe that's going to be playing the game. So, like, like all of us, like most, the vast majority of us, especially people watching this video, are going to be playing ranked. And that's what you guys want to know. So, Vigil overall is going to be around my eyes as the Kavera. Like, it's the same kind of vibe. Like, you're trying to catch people off guard. Situationally, can be really strong, but mo if you pick this operator every single round, you're going to see your rank not go up. It is probably going to go down. You, not to say that I, I rank up all the time, man, and I play Vigil all the time. Are you just killing everybody? Or is it because you're better than everybody? Maybe. Is it because you played Vigil? Probably not. Oh, bro, I got 10 kills, man. Vigil's good, trust. That's just because you shot them. Not because Vigil's good. I can play to Clash and get an ace. Does that mean Clash is instantly the best opera in the game? Hell no. Inca is not going to be high. Very situational. Her guns are just so mid. They just scream mid now. Her guns are mid. Mid, 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 mid. Uh, her heals are nice, though. I'm not going to lie. The heals are really nice. Sometimes I want to play Finca because, you know, we're going to do a lot of realm clearing. We already have a Jackal or a Doke. And I want to be able to like heal after those first engagements with everybody. So, but her guns are very eek. Maverick, this is going to be a controversial one. I think Maverick is dog ass right now. I can't place him at E tier because I do see that he does have some use, but it's very situational and is not good outside of those situations. A lot of times, you're just not going to have much of an opportunity in this current meta to really use Maverick effectively. You try to map something, your team's going to be dead. You try to map something, you don't have help, you might get killed while you're mapping. I mean, I just don't... You're very vulnerable while this is happening, and there are other options of dealing with stuff than just picking a map. You think he's better than Oryx, though? See, I completely disagree. I think Oryx is going to be around here. I don't I think that Legion is a better than Oryx. I will stand by that. But Oryx can set up the site and has, you know, that ability that lets you just slam through walls if you really need to or jump up a hatch. So I a little bit of different depth of Roamer. So I am gonna place Oryx next to the Legion, specifically for the Rome. But I feel like on the Rome, like let's say I'm trying to play coastline. And I'm, we're playing Hookah, and I'm trying to hold Penthouse. Legion's going to be a by far better roamer than Oryx. But like on a map like, let's say, Bank, a lot of, like a lot of vertica verticality, Oryx is going to have a lot more potential to do things with the Bailiff and the moving up and down floors a, a little bit more than Legion will, would be able to. Oryx is situational. Oryx is a little bit more situational, but I know people are going to cry when I don't put Oryx really high. But in my eyes, I just don't see Oryx really offering anything super special. So, And you guys convinced me. I'll, I'll put Oryx at A. Console guys, don't yell at me. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Wind Delta... Oryx here is here on PC. I mean, he's played sometimes and not really great, but when you look at console, I mean, I'm looking at Oryx mainly as a console player and not as a PC player because on console, I think that he's kind of, why bother? But I, I know console players love this guy. So, I'll play, I'll leave an A tier and just move on. Azami, oh, Azami's an S tier. I mean, do I need to explain that one? Azami's by far the best operator in the game, right next to Solus. So, do I need to explain either of these at all? Let me know. Azami is extremely strong in every single site, on every single map, in every single situation. Solus requires the hands of a high level player to be extremely strong. But it's extremely annoying to have to deal with if 
is in the hands of that player. Extremely annoying. Always that constant aggression, the constant runouts, the never feeling safe. That's the Solus. Kate, S tier. I mean, that utility is the best in the game. P90 is bad, though. P90 is not an amazing weapon with a 1x, but it's not bad. I wouldn't say it's bad. Kate is S tier. I will fight you guys on tooth and nail that Kate is S tier. The only thing bad about Kate is his killing potential. His guns are a little bit mid. His shotgun, 1.5, it's like, it's pretty good. It's okay. And his AUG is okay. But he's a nitro. And his utility is by far the best to keep walls and hatches close. Yeah, I, I think that Oryx is just running around and shoot people. But that, I mean, that's his role. And if, you, if he functioned well on that role, I would argue that this as a ranked, more of a ranked tier list, that he functions okay. I don't want to place him lower because I know that p people that, you know, will normally play Oryx are going to be... Probably winning more matches. I, I I'm just I'm just saying like you know, okay. Let's place Mozzie. Mozzie I feel like is also a really good roamer. But I don't know. It, it, this is really more of a Mozzie's high because his gun is pretty good and he has a nitro. His pests are kind of strong and if you get a camera, you can function like Valkyrie in a way. More more of an aggressive player, but. Honestly, it hurts me to place operators like this that, that high up, but I, I, I know what I, I, I physically have to. Mozzie's really strong. I, I think that he is the second best roamer in my eyes, along next to Legion. I just feel like Legion has more. You just can do it. Legion can do everything. Mozzie kind of has to roam in a way. Legion can do it all. You can do whatever you want. Look, do you want to roam? Okay. Do you want to anchor? Cool. Mozzie is kind of like, you kind of need to be playing a little bit more aggressive. Knock. I think Knock is going to be at l A tier for only one reason. The gun is mid. Everything else is S tier. The gun is mid, so A tier. But grenades. Uh, I just don't know. I'm going to place Knock at A tier. Only because I really don't like that gun. I think the Knock's gun is in this range. But everything else is obviously S here. So, A tier. You guys may hate me on this one, but I'm going to place Warden at the S tier. I am sorry, but Warden is the best gun on defense. The best fragger on defense. And if you ever go for a flash or a smoke, anything, Warden instantly cancels you too. And you have a nitro for some reason. I don't know why. But he has all that. I'm sorry. I just. Maybe, oh, bro, said about Warden. I'm, tell me how many times you guys see people playing Warden, and how many times does that person have the most kills on your team? Very, very often. They're very correlated. Warden's very strong. I'm sorry, it's just, in, in the fragging department, Warden's just strong. In this current meta, in the current meta, Warden is ex extremely strong. I will fight you on that. Uh, Emeril, kind of situational, but kind of really strong. Uh, B tier. Hard breach charge. And there's a lot of opportunity. In, there's like a lot of Amaru plays. I'm sure a lot of you know that only happen because you're Amaru. So, gotta put the B tier. I, I can't see that being A tier up with this lineup, but definitely really strong sometimes. Kelly, uh, more at this range. Yeah, I feel comfortable with that. Kelly can be really strong, but again, you are forced to a singular play style that is a little mid, and uh, you're not going to have a lot of opportunity to do a lot. Kelly is a lot of fun to play, though. I mean, pays up, but, you know, overall not going to be doing anything super special. Well, my, I place. Jaeger at the A tier, but I am placing Wamai at the S tier. Because I think Wamai fits in the current meta a lot better than the current Jaeger. Jaeger lost it oh wait, Jaeger lost I think he lost his barb, right? It's been so long, I forgot. Yeah, he lost his barb and he's gonna have an observation blocker and a bulletproof cam. And the current meta is, is kinda like move around and maneuver and Wamai can throw his 
this on the fly wherever he needs to. He has a 1-5 scope, and he has impacts. It can just be really active. Jaeger is kind of... He can't be as active, and he can't move his utility around. I feel like, well, my fits in the current meta better. So, I, I'm sorry. I just... Well, my, well, my S here. I stand by that. But Rooney... Uh, I love my Rooney. I haven't played a Rooney in a minute, because... That three armor is definitely tough on that realm, but uh, Rooney is going to be B tier. The gates are sometimes nice. A lot of times they just protect the attackers because you can't engage them as actively. Um, the gates are annoying to have to deal with, but they're not really hard to deal with. You can just throw a drone at them or whatever. Like It's not hard to find the utility to burn in a Rooney gate. It's really not. I wish you could like stack the gates on, do on a door. A I mean, I feel like that would be kind of nice if we didn't have the three in a row. But you can only have one on a door, and a lot of times it's not that hard to burn that. Uh, DMR on defense, though, is a goddamn powerhouse. That by itself makes me want to take Aruni to A tier, but I'm going to leave Aruni at B tier for now. The DMR on defense is extremely goddamn strong. So Aruni is at B tier because of utility and a little... I, I, I don't know, like... I want to place Rooney at A tier. In fact, I will. I don't even care. My tier list. I can make the rules. That DMR, DMR on defense. No one else has one. Sorry. <laughs> I make the rules. Malusi. Malusi used to be an instant S tier because of the way the ability works and a three speed with impacts. Now Malusi's a little bit worse, but I don't think Malusi's that much worse. But Because the traps are still really good, but... You have to be able to just take it on the chin and be like, yeah, I'm a three armor now. I can't be as aggressive as I was, as I was before, but Lucy's still really strong. It'd slow people down. Yeah, and everybody can set up the side. That does count. Lucy's still, I think, is really strong. I'm, I just, it, it'll win you a lot of games. You have an advantage here. Especially in the current meta, which is kind of that crouch, walk, rat stuff. So, yeah, it'll block your drone's line of sight. Flores, I feel like this is a very obvious one. C tier. Flores is... Of course not. He's S tier. Like, come on. Like, you can dumpster an entire enemy's defense with Flores. And he has a pretty good guns. You get three, Lux. You get three. Which is kind of nice, but... Uh, I don't know. You get three. I would just place it on a wall on our line of sight so they can't just shoot it. So when they walk in, they hit the utility and they have to turn around to shoot it while a, a teammate is swinging that person and they can't move. Three of them. You get three of them. Like I said, like, but here's the problem with the, the, I know I've talked about this several times, but that's because this is, this is honestly a big deal. These are the operators with observation blockers. This is my problem. Ella, barbed wire. Rook, impacts. Warden, nitro. Kavera, impacts. Cade, nitro. Maestro, impacts. Pulse, nitro. And then you have Alibi. I mean, you can make a deal with that because observation blocker and prox alarm. You can make an argument for Alibi and Jaeger. So I feel like if you are going to have observation blockers, you bring either Alibi or Jaeger. Everyone else, I, I just don't see the reason why you wouldn't bring that other utility that just would function overall better in my eyes. So. Osa, the people that want to play Montaigne but also want to have a gun. Osa's A tier, very strong, very annoying, EMP impacts. Basically, if you're running a Thermite and you bring an Osa, it's like a match made in heaven other than Thatcher, who's usually banned. So, you know, this is how he adapted. So, Osa's really strong at the breach. It's very annoying to deal with. And you might be able to go for an aggressive plant. Thorn got a slight little buff with Fenrir. If you pair them together, Thorn becomes a little bit better. But I'm still going to place Thorn around the C tier. Like, I, her gun's really good. But everything else is kind of like... Eh. You can't get the occasional kill with a trap, but it doesn't happen very often. It does not happen very often. And sense is E tier. Yeah, I, I must, I'm gonna die on that hill. Sense is E tier. Uh, ability is very easy to, to counter. 
I mean, if oh no, they have they have a sense. I can't see through the smoke. Impact or nitro through in the smoke and it goes away. I hate that function of sense, but that is why sense is horrible. Your gun is very mid. It is a very dollar tree version of the PDW. And you are gonna have a hard reach charge, which is nice to have, but there's so many operators that are gonna have that function, like ging. Like why are you picking sense over ging? You're gonna have to you're gonna have to sell me on that. I just can't understand why. But um This is my tier list. Now before we go, um if you guys have anyone that you want to move up or down a tier, make an argument now. This is your time but for the next five minutes, so Although, other than that, I mean, this is it. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, make sure to drop down in the comments who you thought I messed up and where would you place them. I'm not everybody's going to be the exact same. This is my tier list on how I think about the game in terms of operator lineups. S tier being higher up, being always good. A tier being good occasionally, good, good pretty often. B tier being depends on the situation. C tier being really depends on the situation. D tier is usually going to be kind of mid and easier is do not ever pick this operator or you're a dumbass so <laughs> well in my eyes as a pc player doc to me is just a better version of thunderbird in every way and you can set up the site and you have barb so i i i just a lot of times as an attacker when they have a Thunderbird, I get excited because if I get a kill, I make it somehow a little bit into the site. I get all of those heals. I love that. Doc, you never get that situation. And Doc is a powerhouse with one five. The meta kind of favors one five scopes right now. And Thunderbird's gun is very, very bad. Like Thunderbird's gun is not fun or easy to use in any capacity. It is it is a bumpy ride. It's riding a Bronco. No match to be S tier. I just can't agree with that because I feel like the air jabs are the air jabs by themselves are more B tier, but the way that Nomad functions is A tier because of her gun combo with flashbangs and air jabs is just really strong. I can't put Nomad into S tier, but I feel like she sits very confidently in A tier. Best operator for a beginner to unlock, look at S tier and go across. All right. Um, T Bird is headed towards C and D tier. I put Thunderbird at B tier because I know console players are going to cry to me. In my eyes, Thunderbird is more of a D tier operator or a C tier operator. How many situations do you have time? Oh, guys, I'm hurt. Let me run across the site to go to a heal. You're dead. Oh, that's that's okay, Senville. I can just place them around like. You can place them around. Let's say we put one up in Raptors on Clubhouse. Let's say the guy in Raptors dies. Now you gave the attackers a free heal that they can, they can constantly use. I just... When your ability can help the enemy, I just don't think it's as strong as it should be. When docs are 0 to 100, you get the uses of that. I just feel like it overall functions better. Gun is better. You can set up the site, and you can, you have, you're going to have barb. I mean, I, I don't know. Why is Rook on E tier? Because there's nothing good about Rook. He is a off-brand Dollar Tree version of Doc. The, Rook is the is the Doc player that when they pick Rook is because they feel like they are going to be ass. You pick Rook because I feel like I'm going to die. I at least want to give my teammates armor. You should not be playing with people or playing at all if you are in the mentality of I'm going to die and lose, so I'm going to give my teammates armor. So, I feel like that's just a bad mentality to have. Yes, it's a viable list for solo queue because that's kind of how the meta is right now. You think of it as like as a solo player because at some point in the current meta, you're gonna be end up in a one v one and you gotta win it. So in my eyes, this is the list for that. So hey guys, make sure to subscribe, drop a comment, and leave a like down below for more. This is my tier list. Peace out.